Okay, it's Coat Prepper back with you. I'm out here at the range. And um, I got the 300 today. And uh, I've got some of these fine trophy golds by HSM Hunting Shack Munitions made right here in Montana, about oh, 30 minutes north of me in Stevensville. And uh, these are featuring the the Burger uh, VLDs, extended range VLD bullets. And if you do your research on these bullets, uh, these are premier, um, premier, premier bullets that they're putting on these. Hard to find ammunition with those bullets in it uh, commercially. And uh, they're not cheap, but you know what? When you're pursuing an elk or something like that and you got one shot, um, you know, that 45 bucks you spent on a box of ammo is worth all that meat. So we're going to... Got a target set up out here, about 40 yards, 35, 40 yards, something like that. And we're going to, I'm going to clean the bore out with the first shot. Um, I'm just taking for granted that this um, barrel is sighted in, uh, or I'm sorry, this barrel is broken in. Um, this is a used firearm. It's a Winchester Model 70 and 300 Win Mag. And uh, I'm just going to clean out the bore. And one thing I want to mention, guys, on bolt action rifles, when on a rifle like this accuracy is everything so uh, most folks you know when they get done shooting they, you know they go home and then they want to clean the bore out all right clean the bore out and take all the copper out well, you're doing yourself a disservice because you sighted it in with a dirty barrel all right now what most people call dirty is actually called seasoning you're seasoning your bore um, microscopically it's depositing these uh, copper elements on your bore and that's what your scope is sighted in with the bore when it's not clean so there's really no need to clean your bore unless you are conditioning your bore uh, when your rifle is brand new uh, other than that, there's no reason to clean it unless you know you've got an obstruction or something in there Then of course you're gonna want to take that out But other than that no reason to clean your bore um, Anybody like snipers and things like that You know they they know you don't don't mess with your bore once you get it sighted in and she's hitting where you want it Leave it alone. Just keep it the way it is Because when you leave the range and you sight it in, you go home, and you clean your bore. Then you go back out to the range, and your cold bore shot, it's off. You know, it hasn't hit where you left off. Well, there's a reason. You cleaned your bore. Okay, so don't do that. You can just leave it the way it is. It's not going to hurt it one bit. The exception to that rule is if you are shooting lead bullets. You know, non non copper jacketed bullets, just straight lead. Then, of course, you're going to have to clean your bore. Other, if you're shooting copper jacketed bullets, let me pull one of these out so that you know what I'm talking about. If you're shooting these copper jacketed bullets, okay, no need to clean your bore. Uh, one last thing, don't leave these out in the sun. All right, keep them in the shade. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around here, and I'm just going to set these right here. I'm going to pull a couple of these out, put them in my rifle, and put these back in so they stay clean, and keep them in the shade. Don't leave them in the sun. Your ballistics are going to change. You're going to get a hotter load if these are left in the sun. And you're going to find inconsistencies, especially at longer ranges, when you leave them in the sun like that. What changes your point of impact at longer ranges with this ammunition, with any ammunition, is ammo temperature. That's the most crucial thing. That is most crucial. Then anything else is ammo temperature. If you know your ammo temperature and you know your range, you know how to dope your scope where to hit. So let me get started. I'm going to take my first shot and clean this bore out and see where it's hitting on that target up there. Okay. Uh, 
Gosh, I got um, a bunch of shots off. The scope was so far off. I mean, it wasn't even hitting paper. Oh, uh, gosh, it was almost a foot off. So, it took a while, but I got it in. And it's not grouping very well. Um, right where it sits right now is not quite 100 yards. And right now I've got about a two inch, I got a, about an inch and a half to two inch group. And that's substandard, substandard. So what I'm looking at is these uh, 185 grain uh, bullets may be a little bit too heavy. I may have to go with like a 165 or a 160 grain. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot these up. And uh, there is, way up there, <laughs> I'm gonna film this, see if I can find it on the camera. There's a tree, let's see here, where are you at? Way up there. Okay, right there. There is a big rock, it looks like, at the base of that tree. I'm gonna shoot at it. Okay. Now here we go, look at that. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna try and shoot that rock. It's a couple hundred yards or so away. So, let me get set up for it and I'll zoom in and we'll, I'll video it. So, here we go. Okay, there it is. I got the camera set up. So keep an eye on that area. I might not be able to see where it hits, but uh, I'm gonna go get my rifle set up right here real quick and pop off a few. Okay, I'm set up. Here we go. I heard something hit. Well, that's it. Looks like, with my naked eye, looks like I might have been hitting it. I don't know. I have to review the footage. Oh, whoo, the barrel's hot now. All right, I'm gonna review that footage. Okay, I reviewed it, and it looks like it was shooting just a little bit low. And, uh, which is, it's further, that means it's further than I thought it would be. So we're probably looking at more like 300 yards instead of 200 or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim just a little high, like at the top of the rock, and see if I can't get a little closer. But I did hit it, I know, at least once, because I heard the smack. I heard the report. When you hit a rock, you can hear it go pop. You can hear it. So keep an ear out for that pop noise. Um, so I'm going to grab a couple shells here. Out of this thing. 
And hopefully this camera will... I don't have a tripod. Come on. Right there. All right, let me load up three more. Take three more shots. Okay, I think I see what was going on there. I put this in the car. Let it cool off. I'm gonna review it. I think I know what was going on there though. The first shot I believe nailed it. I heard a major report. And the, I think the other two went high. And that tells me that the ammo that I put in the chamber after the first shot was taking the heat off the barrel, became a hotter load, and was shooting higher. So the third shot that I did, I aimed pretty much right on the rock, and it appeared it went high, but I'm gonna review it and get back right with, right with you. Alrighty. Well, I reviewed, let me get my ammo here. I reviewed that footage. I got three rounds left. This is fun. Boy, does that thing pound the old shoulder. Wow. Put this ammo in the car here. I, um, I had to grab this pillow that I use for camping. That, I think my mom made that one. Um, my camping pillow. I, um, had to put that pillow I was resting the gun on it but um I didn't have all I'm wearing is this t-shirt and if you look at this angle right here all right I had I've been shooting but I have to shoot way up there right so the gun wasn't I didn't have a very good rest at all the back end was swinging around and brothers and sisters that is a long way up there so it was kind of the front was resting but it wasn't real steady but i was able to get real close i was surprised i, I, st I could still get that close at that range without a really good solid rest so i had to put the pillow on my shoulder because man my shoulder is killing me right now it is killing me right now but um i reviewed the footage and the footage of that last three shots, that last string, showed me that that ammo um, absorbs the heat of that barrel pretty quick. After that first shot, I mean, it, one shot, that heats your barrel up. I mean, I felt it after one shot, man, she was hot right there at the chamber. Chamber another round, 
that brass pulls the heat off that barrel and heats up your load becomes a hotter load so you're gonna shoot higher so you have to keep that in mind um, and that comes with practice knowing okay uh, it's gonna shoot this high at this temperature at that distance at whatever distance so it's it's not just getting it sighted in and say okay my gun shoots one day you know you go and sight it in all oh, my gun shoots you know you did on at 300 yards well at that temperature yes let's say it's 72 degrees out then in the fall you know you do you sight it in during summer and then in the fall it's freezing out while you're hunting elk um, you're gonna be shooting low at that distance inches low because now your ammo is colder so you have to keep that in mind now I'm done shooting here today my shoulder is just is pounded um, man that thing wow what a cannon um, I'm gonna get some 165 grains um, I know HSM carries them and I'm gonna try the 165s and see if they don't group better at 100 yards than these 185s do. I've still got three of the 185s left. And when I come back to, to uh, test the 165s, I'm going to test the uh, three to five shot group of the 165s against the uh, three to five shot group or the three shot group that I'll do with the 185s that I have with me now. So we're, you have to match the load to your rifle. You can't just go out and say, well, I need to shoot a heavy bullet. You know, no, you have to match the ammo to your, to your rifle. And if, it's, if it has to be a little bit lighter load, that's just the way it's got to be. But a 165, that's no problem. That'll, I mean, I could shoot, I could put an elk down at 600 yards with that, no problem. So that's what I'm gonna do. So. That's it for today, guys. Out here in Big Sky Country. Big Sky Country. Check out this view, right? Got a river raging right down here on the other side of the road. Kind of smoky looking. Boy, is it beautiful out here. You look almost straight up and there's a part of a mountain there. Eagle flying way up over there. But uh, I'd like to one day go out back in here, out in there, and do some walking around. But yeah, there's some good practicing up and through here for elk. So, that's it. Bye.